Her crews are putting finishing touches on the Carlsbad desalination plant. The Encina power station's iconic smokestack is a geographic signpost that towers over its neighbors. It's a marked contrast to the low-slung gray buildings hidden behind landscaping next door. But those buildings hide the pumps, pipes, and filters that are the guts of the desalination plant. Much of the remaining work is finishing the outside walls, adding parking areas and landscaping. The bulk of the construction is now behind us and we're in the final stages of proving out the facilities and getting it ready for operation later this fall. Peter McGlagan is a vice president for Poseidon Water. He's a tireless advocate for seawater desalination as a drought-proof water supply. It's always available regardless of whether it snows in the Sierras or in the Rocky Mountains, whether it rains in San Diego. The plant is designed to produce 50 million gallons of drinking water a day. That's enough to fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool every 18 minutes. It'll be up to 10% of San Diego's regional water supply. Everybody's watching what happens here in Carlsbad to gauge how they're going to proceed with their local plans. The success of this plant will demonstrate the viability of this technology as a future municipal water supply for other communities. Other desalination projects are in various stages of development on the West Coast. One is a Poseidon proposal up in Huntington Beach. A bumpy start here might influence those other projects. The Pacific Institute's Heather Cooley agrees that this plant is being closely watched. It's hard to say what the long-term impacts are going to be. Um, but people are looking to this plant uh, to try to better understand what the opportunities and, and the challenges are for California. Cooley says there are a lot of things communities need to consider when developing a water source that is twice as expensive as imported water. It'll depend on uh, how low demand is and whether there's cheaper efficiency options available. It'll depend on what the other supply options might be in that particular area. Critics are not ready to give up the fight, even though the plant is about to open. Surfrider San Diego's Julia Chun here is not convinced this is the right time for large-scale desalination. Desalination shouldn't be the first thing we're turning to to solve our water crisis. It's probably part of the equation, but there's a lot more we can do in terms of conservation and water use before we, turn, well, before we get there. Chun here says taking salt out of ocean water uses too much energy and leaves a huge carbon footprint. Plant officials plan to buy carbon credits to offset greenhouse gas impacts. But Chun here says pulling water into the plant and discharging briny wastewater offshore still puts marine life at risk. The problem here is that it's not being done in a very sophisticated way. They're just drawing in additional ocean water with additional marine life impacts to dilute the brine before they send it out. Instead of using spray diffusers, um, things that would... Uh, dilute the water more before it entered the ocean environment and have spread out the impacts as opposed to being so concentrated, basically. State officials have already rewritten the desalination rule book, in part because of concern over the Carlsbad plant. New facilities seeking a permit in California should have underground intake pipes and more sophisticated outfalls. This 56-inch pipe will carry the desalinated water to the San Diego County Water Authority's aqueduct in San Marcos. The authority's Bob Yamada says the pipeline is a crucial artery that will feed the region's effort to become water independent. Yamada says everyone is sharing the cost. Over 68% of the people polled said they'd be willing to pay something more for desalination. And so uh, the, the $5 a month is, is really a small price to pay for that additional reliability that we're going to receive by having this drought-proof supply in our portfolio. Yamada says desalinated water is about twice as expensive as imported water, but the authority is projecting that'll change. They say they've locked in the cost of desalinated water for the next 30 years, while the cost of imported water will steadily increase. Eric Anderson, KPBS News.